got your homemade still here we got a stainless steel pressure cooker from Walmart it's $49 has to be stainless steel you cannot use aluminum we also got a little cheap $16 hot plate from Walmart because you don't want to use gas obviously when you're using around working around uh, alcohol um, you're gonna need some corks a couple corks couple sizes here and there here's actually one um, you're gonna use it to put your temperature gauge in obviously and you're going to use it for your pressure release over here. This is a pressure release. You're going to cork that off so no pressure gets out. You don't want no leaks in the system whatsoever. Um, obviously, it's flammable, which you're working around. And you don't want anything to leak and catch on fire and blow yourself up. <coughs> Teflon works great. You can actually use it and it will contaminate your alcohol. Teflon this. This pressure cooker actually had a piece in it for a safety release, a cap that went on this. Anyways, we put a Teflon around it and wrapped it and then put our 3 8 gauge copper tubing, which goes in our 5-gallon bucket. We just put that around it and it fits on there perfectly. So... Got our copper tubing, goes down to our five gallon bucket. We actually made a bracket two inches spacing for our coil spiral. Um, gives you a nice real slow run, you know, gives it a nice time to, you know, turn back into a liquid. Um, you're gonna need um, some glue. I used JB Weld here. You're also going to need some uh, caulk or sealant, some sort, right there. This is where it comes out. Obviously, you can see it dripping here. Um, sometimes it drips fast, sometimes it drips slow. It's all determined on the, your spiral. So if you get your spiral down correctly, then you'll be all right. If you don't, then... It's going to drip like how it's dripping here. Sometimes it drips fast, sometimes it drips really slow like it's doing now. We are just running wine today for a test run pretty much. We just got this uh, set up just up and running. Actually works very well. You never want to cook over 212. I would never go over 210 really because obviously water boils at 212 so if you're boiling over 212 then you're going to cook over okay so you want to stay around maybe 200 at the most uh, 180 at the least and you're going to run really slow at 180 so we're running some wine today just to make sure everything's working good. We actually have cornmeal and, and uh, cornmeal and oats uh, fermenting right now. And I just wanted uh, another bottle, as you can see here, to ferment in. We actually have six ounces here already run um, it's very clear this wine gives you kind of a fruity alcohol kind of taste it's actually very good um, it's a little burny if you could always slower the better you never want to cook fast I started cooking too fast at the beginning and it gives you the first two ounces you always want to throw out because it's acetone, obviously. But it gives you more of a cloudy, yellower, murky. And you don't want to drink that. That's bad. It's, it's getting burnt. You're cooking it too fast. So slow it down a little bit. Slower the better. 
you never want to rush because you're in products and it'll be your rush product. So nice and slow. You can see here it's dripping real nice. We already have about we almost have six ounces here again. Looks like five about now. <laughs> so it's about it guys. Real cheap, simple way to make alcohol. It's um not a system for you to you know make millions of dollars on, but something you can have fun with. Science kind of a science project. And uh, hopefully here next week we'll run uh, the cornmeal and uh, oats. And this is supposedly pretty good. We'll have our hydrometer. We'll show you a hydrometer test. And uh, that's about it for right now. Thanks for watching.